let's be honest here. We all know I'm trying to be one mind syndicate, so let's jump over that. Today we'll be starting the Badab War. Let's start with its origins. The Maelstorm Zone. Situated along the eastern fringe in the Segmentum Ultima, the region of the galaxy, now known as the Maelstorm Zone, was explored during the Great Crusade of the, 30, of the 31st millennium. Second in size and extend only to the Eye of Terror, the Maelstorm is a vast warp rift that scars both the physical universe and the fabric of the Immaterium beyond. The Maelstorm covers an area of many hundreds of light years across, and its presence in space is marked by a vast, slowly turning gyre compromised of a nebula, dust, and stellar material in which countless stars and worlds have long been lost to the Empyrean. During the Great Crusade, the vast armies of the Emperor of Mankind attempted to penetrate the Maelstorm and cleanse it of the evil that lurked within. The wealth of the worlds bordering, to, bordering the Maelstorm has drawn mankind to the Maelstorm Zone time and again, despite its manifold hazards and difficulties. And indeed, there is really evidence of humanity's presence in the region, as far back as the Age of Technology. The Maelstorm Zone has also drawn humanity's enemies, as well in their countless number and diverse loathsome forms. Hundreds of warships and thousands of troops were lost in the early campaigns during the Great Crusade era, and with the rest of the galaxy to reconquer, the Emperor declared the region Purgatus. I wonder what that means, right? In the years following the Horus Heresy, Primarch Robotic Gulliman of the Ultramarine Space of the Ultramarine Space Marine Legion decided that the inhabitants of the Maelstorm were too great a threat to the sh shaky stability of the recovering Imperium to ignore, and ordered the surrounding regions reinforced in an effort to contain any attacks that might originate from within. Over time, the Imperium slowly established several important Imperial outposts within the Maelstorm during the 30th, 38th and 39th millennia. These outposts rose to prominence as flickering beacons of human influence and strength within the region. The three vital star systems that formed the links in a distant chain that followed the resources of the Maelstorm Zone to flow into the coffers of the more established Imperial sectors beyond were the star system of Changax, Sagan and Badab. As the situation in the Maelstorm became ever more volatile, this path of Imperial commerce came increasingly under threat. By the mid of the 31st millennium, the heavily militarized hive world of Tsangax, located in the star system of the same name, was the most populated planet in the northern Maelstorm zone. Having long been a linchpin of Imperial control of the Legion, Tsangax was a key strategic world forming a bulk against aggressors and serving as a safe port for Imperial merchant and naval vessels. In the year 555 of the 31st millennium, disaster struck when, within the suddenness of an onrushing storm, Sargax succumbed to corruption from within and attack from without. The planet rapidly fell into bloody civil war between its Imperial garrison and the dead cult nihilist, backed by the intervention of the dreaded Chaos Space Marine warband known as the Reborn. Despite the intervention of the Mantis Warriors chapter, which itself has made a home in the nearby End Endymion cluster subsector, the death toll rose exponentially into the millions. The dead cultists managed to gain access to part, to part of the Syngaxian missile defense network and in a suicidal rage unleashed a rain of atomic and plasma warheads upon the doomed world, shattering its hive cities and disrupting the planet's orbit for several standard years. The resulting permanent nuclear winter, radioactive fallout, and tectonic upheaval annihilated all life on Sangax. With the fall of this key world, Imperial control of the northern Maelstrom zone swiftly crumbled. 
without Sygax, along with other imperial losses suffered in the region over the previous centuries, vital military supply chains stretching as far as Baca and Terra itself were threatened, forcing the Adeptus Terra to act. Maelstorm Warders in 587 of the 31st millennia, the High Lords of Terra pronounced an Edict Imperialis in response to the dire predations, ordering several Space Marine chapters to permanently base themselves in the Maelstorm Zone in order to protect the Imperium's interest and pacify the region. In recognition of their past glorious service to the Imperium, the Astro Claus chapter was given the, eye on the high honor of the senior role in the commanding in commanding the newly formed Maelstorm Warders. This force was to include fleet-based Lamenters and Charnel Guard chapters to patrol the outer regions and also incorporate the Mantis Warriors who were based in the nearby Endymion Cluster. Once this force was put in place, the Astral Claws took over an orbital battle station in the strategically vital Badab system, which became their fortress monastery and base of op operations. After the establishment, a detachment of Imperial Navy Squadron were permanently assigned to the region to conduct research and destroy and convey protection duties. This naval detachment quickly stabilized the surrounding areas and purged the inner zone of heretical, of heretical and xenos elements that had plagued them. Soon, the wealth of the Maelstorm Zone once again began to flow into the coffers of the Imperium. The greatest operation during these times occurred during the, Scour the Scourge campaign from, 540, from 540 of the 31st millennia to 551, in which the Astral Claws and their allies conducted a series of major combat operations, striking deep into the heart of the Maelstorm in an attempt to take the battle to, to the foe. Initially, the Space Marines were successful until the abrupt withdrawal of the Carnal Guard chapter. The Adeptus Terra served the chapter's ties with the Maelstrom Warders, displacing them to the T Tantanos Crusade in the Veiled region. The sudden loss effectively ended the campaign. The Astro Claw subsequently petitioned for a replacement chapter to be resigned, but were denied. Less than two solar decades later, the Maelstrom Warders suffered a series of setbacks and a high number of casualties among some of their allies, causing a rift in the relations, relations between the wider Imperium and the Warders during this period. Soon the Warders became hard-pressed by an upsurge of demonic incursions and Corsair attacks, pushing them into an increasingly defensive posture and suspending all operations near the Maelstrom itself. Once again, disaster struck as a series of orc raids originating within the Maelstorm struck deep into the Badab sector. During the Battle of Hell Cities, the Astro Claws Wait, there's a point there, whatever. The Astro Claws chapter master, Master Vrovik Blake, went against his own doctrine and pursued the orcs back into the Maelstorm itself. Having led the Astro Claws to the for the last two standard centuries, he fell in single combat with the orc war boss Vorg Manaburn, Manburn, Manburna, whatever, forcing the Astro Claws to retreat. On return to the Badab system, the captain of the Astro Claws third company, Luft Huron, was appointed as chapter master by popular acclaim of his peers in 750 of the 31st millennium. He became the youngest warrior in the chapter's history to attain this esteemed rank. Imperial historians now point out that such a man of flawed character should never have been allowed to rise to the command of a space marine chapter. But Luft Huron had already proven to be an exceptional warrior, as well as a skilled tactician and charismatic leader. He quickly organized the chapter's strategic, and deployment, strategic deployment and established a policy of expending his, chapter, ex expending his chapter's fleet, which had been badly depleted including with its ranks, captured Corsair vessels and aggressive raids. He also established the questionable Scorched Planet policy against their enemies, and increased his chapter's stockpile of Exterminatus-class weapons. This resulted in several fringe worlds that harbor renegade ships 
in the past being turned into lifeless husks. Rise of a Tyrant In 780 of the 31st millennium, whatever, a failed coup attempt on the high world of Badab Primaris led to an abortive civil war, and the Astral Claw stepped in and brutally crushed the conflict. In the aftermath, the elements behind the coup were brought forth to Hufkul Huron for judgment. Mindful of the lesson of Saiganax, Sy the chapter master personally took matters into his own hands, swiftly reimposing order once more. This time, he employed the Astral Claws much more brutally, as they executed much of the planet's ruling class as well as purging those they perceived as morally recidivist. Taking upon himself the mantle of planetary ruler, Luft Huron stylized himself the Tyrant of Badab, claiming the inhabited world in the proximity to the hospital region of the void around the Badab system as his chapter's fiefdom. In his subsequent pronouncement, he echoed the example and precedent of the sovereign realm of Ultramar and the Maelstrom Warder's charter. The nearby system was soon purged wholesale of the ruling elites, and in the, sol in the solar decades afterwards, a number of Astral Claws watch bastions quote marks, were established. The tyrant's chosen servants and political allies were placed in position of positions of power, turning the Badabsis sector into a pocket empire commanded by the Astral Claws. To further cement his power and a massive reorganization of the uneven and often isolationist native planetary defense forces in the region into what would become known as the Tyrant's Legion. Following a unified command structure, these forces now follow the standard dictated by Huron. The Astral Claws assign detachment to further train the Tyrant's Legion in order to purge them of, of the weak elements. Soon, the Tyrant's Legion proved their worth as they repulsed numerous Corsair raids, freeing the Astral Claws from their defensive stance. The chapter was able to conduct a series of lightning raids into outlying areas to harass and destroy heretic and Xenos-controlled areas. With the increase of Huron's tally of victories and the curtailing of Corsair activity and the increase of production never before reached, the fame of the Astral Claws' tyrant grew beyond the Maelstrom zone. Spurred by his success, Huron has his servants delivered a formal and lengthy petition to Terra, making a detailed case for completely subduing the Maelstrom and the surrounding area, which would greatly benefit the Imperium in the long term. In order to achieve this, Huron advocated the deployment of several more Space Marine chapters to the Maelstrom Warder's ranks suggesting that a new founding might even be warranted to meet the need of his plan. Unfortunately, Huron's petition was dismissed without full hearing on the grounds that the military requirements of the Imperium were better met elsewhere. Astral Claws Falter During the mid-700s of the 31st millennium, the Astral Claws submission of required gene seed tides to the Magos in Viliga of the Adeptus Mechanicus became infrequent and incomplete. Although initially a cause for concern, such matters were not uncommon, particularly those space marine chapters deployed to border areas or on crusade, simply because the chapter itself might have a temporary need to retain the jeet seed itself to sustain battlefield losses. But as the omission persisted, this, sign, this signaled to the Mechanicus that there was some darker motive at work. This will later prove to be true with the Astral Clause, as evidence indicates that the first great sin against the established tradition of the Adeptus Astartes would arguably result in the chapter's fall into heresy. Repeatedly denied the reinforcement he had requested to aid him and the Maelstrom Warders in carrying out their tasks, in his arrogance and pride, the Tyrant of Badab sought to expand his forces forces into a force equal to a space marine legion of old. Further convert and investigation would later uncover that the Astral Claws Apothecarian was conducting heretical experiments in rapid gene seed zygote cultivation. Though largely unsuccessful, the Astral Claws eventually stood 
at around an estimated 3,500 battle brothers strong, a direct violation of the prospections laid out in the Codex Astartes. In 729, of course, the 31st millennium, Lufthuran's servants delivered a formal document of petition to the High Lords of Terra, making a detailed case for the complete purging and subduing the Maelstorm and the surrounding area. In order to achieve this, the document set out the case for massively augmented deployment of Space Marine to the Maelstorm waters. Hurrah's petition was... <laughs> once again dismissed without a full hearing on the grounds that the Imperium's needs were better met elsewhere. The Badab, Badab Schism, 748-900 to After further requests to redispute Redistribute resources from the Maelstorm zone were denied, and met with an increased quota demands from the Administratum. In protest, Huron withheld Badal Primaris's planetary tithe to the Administratum and further blocked the passage of trade through his realm in protest over the Adepta's failure to provide him and his allies sufficient resources to police the Maelstorm. Refusing the Astral Claw's role as defenders of the Maelstorm, the Tyrant of Badab soon diverted the industrial resources and manpower to directly supl supplement the Badab sector's defenses, as well as augmenting the Maelstorm fleet detachment and fortification of key worlds under his command. These space-based defenses encircling the outer and inner spheres of the Badab sector came to be known as the Ring of Steel. On Badab Primaris, the tyrant ordered the demolition of the ancient citadel of the ruling Dominars, and instead erected the legendary, hugely fortified Palace of Thorns to his own specifications and designs. The clashing entitlement of the Administratum's Imperial Tide and the ancient rights of the Adeptus Astartes commanders to defend the Imperium by any means necessarily swiftly came to be known as the Badab Schism and will last for more than a standard century and a half, during which the Astral Claws and the Maelstrom Warders would continue to carry on military operations as usual, against a volatile backdrop of worsening tension with the Administratum and Segmentum authorities. The sudden loss of the lifeblood of industry and commerce was keenly felt by the Cartago sector. For more than 11 standard centuries, the Cartan Lords and the planetary, planetary Governors had held the charter to, the, yeah, to distribute the industrial output of the Maelstorm zone and guard this passage from the, from the administratum-controlled supply fortress on Sagan III and then to the western segmentum Ultima and beyond. Isolated by vast distances, the Cartan had long grown fat and decadent, protected by the blood and toil of the more strife-torn realms. War on the Horizon, 780 to 900. Free from their inglorious garrison duty, the Astral Claws intervened in the aftermath of the infamous Fourth Quadrant Rebellion, which had troubled the Imperium for many solar decades. Gathering in a mixed task force comprising of various companies from the Astral Claws, Firehawks, White Scars, and Celestial Guard chapters, backed by the dead corpse of Krieg and Kolsek Astra Militarum regiments, and of course, the titans from the Legio of Venetar, Hufla Huron was elected a battle leader by common consent. Under his inspired command, the task force ruthlessly eradicated the heavily fortified Likanto system of traitors and chaos forces in under a standard year. However, Stibor Lazarek, chapter master of the Firehawks, continued to harbor a grudge over the fact that Huron was given overall command, despite his seniority as chapter master. This grudge with the letter would fester over the coming years until it finally would bear the fruits the fruit of bitterness. In 821, a heavy orc raiding force from the Maelstrom was intercepted and destroyed in a series of battle in the Kirab sector in the Endominion cluster by a combined force of the Maelstrom Warders. During the battle, Lufthan Huron slew Raka, the work war boss in single combat, and was hailed as a hero of the people of Endymion. In 869, at the instigation of their chapter master, 
The Black Templars declared a crusade of wrath into the mail store, assaulting, me, assaulting it from the eastward approach. Meanwhile, the Astral Claws, Lamenters, and Mantis Warriors launched their own assault from the south and northeast approach. Thanks in no, in no small part to Huron's brilliant strategic planning, as well as the metal of the Maelstrom's warders and the Black Templars, they achieved a stunning victory against 23 alien or heretic stronghold worlds. Unfortunately, wider events intervened once again, putting a premature end to the Astral Claw's plans, as the Black Templars were called to a away to aid the beleaguered realms of Ultramar in the wake of the First Tyrannic War. Having already suffered substantial losses in the campaign, the Maelstorm Warders' chapters were forced to withdraw from the Maelstorm, much to Huron's fury. During this time, Lufton Huron was uncharacteristically taciturn and withdrawn on his return from the Maelstorm, either locking himself away in the chapter's archives for solar days on end and refusing to see anyone, or keeping long silent vigils alone in the fortress monastery Panopantic Solar, gazing unblinkingly for hours at the holospheres that, de that depicted the Maelstrom Zone. Some observers say that it was during this time that Huron became corrupted and fell from grace. Denied the goals he had spent a lifetime fighting for, he had been denied his glory as it was snatched from his hands at the last second, I guess, by those he should call master. Finally unhinged him, or maybe he had given in to the hubris and false pride. Some of the tyrant's detractors have even gone so far as to suggest that during the Crusade of Wrath, whilst deep within the nightmare realm of the Maelstorm, something vile or warp-tainted promises had wor wormed their way into his heart. Matters worsen once again, not only within the Maelstrom Zone, but the wider Imperium as well, as the threat of High Fleet Behemoth left the defense of the Segmentum Ultima in disarray, and wars and rumors of wars as far as the Eye of Terror and the Ghoul Stars threatened to erupt as well as galaxy-wide revolts and other strange phenomena. Soon, crisis followed crisis, yes, crisis followed crisis. And in the dying years of the 1800s, of course, 31st millennium, Huron saw the Maelstrom Zone slipping from his grasp, and all the victories the Maelstrom Warders had gained began to crumble. And so, in an attempt to tighten his grip, he remained unaware that elsewhere events were moving against him. It would not be long before the brooding tyrant of Badab would spark into violence, and the Imperium would once again should the blood of its own.